हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकलिट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस वीडियो इज ऑल अबाउट द ए आर एस नेट एंड ए आर एस नेट एनवायरमेंटल साइंस प्रीवियस एस क्वेश्चन विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस वीडियो दिस इज द पार्ट वन एंड इफ यू हैवन चेक द प्रिपरेशन हाउ टू प्रिपेयर फॉर दिस एग्जाम द सिलेबस देन यू कैन चेक द लिंक गिवन इन द आई बटन सो हियर आई ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू नो दैट वेदर यू आर एबल टू फाइंड द क्वेश्चन पेपर फॉर ए आर एस नेट और नॉट इफ यू हैव फाउंड यू कैन कमेंट मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन बिकॉज देर आर लॉट ऑफ फेक थिंग्स गोइंग ऑन फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन पेपर सो ये जो क्वेश्चन पेपर है इसका मिलना बहुत ही डिफिकल्ट है बिकॉज दिस एग्जामिनेशन पेपर आर नॉट अवेलेबल एनी वेयर एज पर एज आई हैव फाउंड सो हियर सम ऑफ द यूट्यूब चैनल्स एंड वेबसाइट्स आर डीलिंग विद द फेक थिंग्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वील डिस्कस ए लिटिल बिट हियर देन विल स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कशन सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल हियर दे हैव गिवेन द ए एस आर बी नेट एनवायरमेंटल साइंस प्रीवियस ईयर सॉल्व पेपर फॉर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन बट एज यू कैन सी एज दिस इज फेक मोस्ट ऑफ यू वुड हैव टोल्ड इन द कमेंट सेक्शन सो दे हैव टर्न ऑफ द कमेंट्स सो कमेंट्स यहाँ पे बंद है एंड वेन यू स्टार्ट दिस वीडियो वी विल सी दैट हियर पेपर थ्री इज गिवेन सो यू कैन मार्क हियर पेपर थ्री बट there is only one paper for ars net examination and here this is mentioned that paper 3 so this is some other exam paper so don't get fooled by this so be aware of that and now we will discuss some of the questions i have collected this was very hectic job but i was able to collect few questions and we will discuss those questions which i have collected and prepare for the examination so jo bhi mujhe mila hai we will prepare more better than the other websites and we will try to be more confident so first question which is from the ars net 2012 exam is helophytes are what kind of plants so the options were aquatic plants terrestrial plants marshy plants and desert plants before knowing that similar kind of question was also asked in the same examination in this year 2012 so the question was samophytes grow on what kind of surface or what kind of habitat so here we will solve both this question and we'll know all the concept because some questions can come from here and we should be always ready to answer all kinds of question so here the correct option for the helophytes question will be option number c yes the option number c was marshy plants are the helophytes so helophytes are the plant which are typically in found in marshy or lake age environment so lake age environments means the edge of the lakes where these plants grow are marshy in nature and these are the plants whose perinating organ lies in soil or the mud below the water so this perinating organ all these things we we'll learn no need to worry because these are very important terms the questions can be asked but the aerial shoots that are the shoot stems they protrude above the water an example is phragmites communis which is called as the common reed so common reed is called as phragmites communis but why can't we consider them as aquatic plants so aquatic was also an option but we can't consider them as aquatic plants because they are present in the marshy land and water marshy land marshes can often be found at the edge of lakes and streams where they form a transition between the aquatic and terrestrial ecosystem so from this you can know that it is telling about the ecotone region so you should note down ecotone are the transition between any two ecosystem and this marshes can be called as the ecotone between aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems that's why they are specifically considered under marshy plants so these marshes are neither completely filled with water nor in the terrestrial region so they are the intermediate or transition region so i hope you are able to understand let's move to the next slide which is very very important now we will know about the cryptophytes so you see it is important because the condition under the hydrophytes which are subdivision of cryptophytes in which helophytes are also present we will know one by one and this is very very important kindly note down so this cryptophytes are one of the categories under the ronkier's classification so i am sure that you would have heard about ronkier's classification of the plants based on the bird position so resting birds position and what are these resting birds will know resting birds are also known as perinating bird or perinating organ so why it is called as like that i will tell you so let us take an example of this plant so no need to worry whether it is geophytes helophytes or hydrophytes just think that this is a plant which is under the cryptophytes and this portion this is called the resting buds or they are the perinating buds so the plants under the cryptophytes are having the resting buds lying either beneath the surface of the ground as bulbs corms or rhizomes 
or resting birds under the submerged water so in cryptophytes what happens is these type of vegetative structures they can lie beneath the soil or beneath the water so whenever this condition is seen in any plants that plant will be called as cryptophytes under the classification of ronquier system so i hope you are able to understand it is not only about the aquatic plants but also the terrestrial plants which are having typically that their buds that vegetative structure should lie beneath the surface of the surface of the soil or surface of the water body so if it is lying beneath the surface of the ground then these structures are example as bulbs corms or rhizomes so they are called as these things but if it is resting under the water it is called as resting birds thing is why do we need to know about these resting birds or perennating bird because these birds are very very helpful for the plants because in the unfavorable condition the aerial portion these all things will die but these birds these perennating organs they will store the food for the conditions to be favorable for the next season and then these plants will again survive so ye bahut important hai these structures are helpful in storing the food in the unfavorable condition and during the favorable condition they help to grow the new shoots new plant organs so they are very very important so i hope you are able to understand this now these cryptophytes are again further divided into three categories these are geophytes helophytes and hydrophytes geophytes the plants which are having their resting bird or their perennating birds in the dry land so those are in the dry lands beneath the land surface they are called specifically as geophytes example is tulip and areocarpus similarly helophytes we have discussed many of them that they are in the marshy land in the lake or pond edges and the example of helophytes are reed mace similarly what are hydrophytes so hydrophytes are they have the resting that birds are resting by being submerged under the water so as you can see here the birds are submerged under the water completely so these are hydrophytes but here in case of the helophytes they are resting on the marshy area so this is the simple difference between hydrophytes and helophytes and the example of hydrophytes is frog bit so let's move to the next question the next question was samophytes grow on what kind of habitat and here the correct option will be option number a yes samophytes they grow on specifically on sand and gravel so don't get confused between rocks and stones because the classification was given by eugenius warming so this is not global warming so he was very genius that's why eugenius warming who gave this classification in the year 1895 into several ecological groups of plants on the idea of the requirements of water and also on the type of substratum so substratum means on the type of nature of soil on which they are growing based on these two categories he categorized different plants so we'll know one by one because these are very important that questions can come in this examination so first of all warming classified the plants on basis of nature of substratum or nature of the soil into five important groups so i will request you that please note down all these things very important you can say that yes we know samophytes are growing on sand xerophytes are growing on the water deficit examples but here these are very specific and you should note down so plants which are going on growing on acidic soil they are called as oxalophytes plants which are going on saline soil they are called as halophytes so don't get confused between halophytes and halophytes when it is given halophytes that means plants growing on saline soil or salty soil similarly plants growing on sand and gravel are called samophytes which is discussed in this question and plants growing within the crevices of rock crevices of rock means here suppose this is the rock and here there is the gap in between the rocks so in huge rocks there can be the crevices due to the water falling on that or any other environmental geological factors so those plants which are growing inside the crevices of rocks are called as chasmophytes or chasmophytes similarly we will know the other classification given by warming that is on the basis of water requirement the plants were 
further classified into hydrophytes xerophytes and mesophytes so most of you will be knowing all these three but there are also subdivision you must know so i will tell one by one hydrophytes means very easy plants growing in or near water bodies they are called as hydrophytes according to the warming classification similarly xerophytes you must be knowing plants which are adapted to survive under very poor supply of accessible water so water less habitat or very less water where there is present then their xerophytes grow for example cactus in the dry habitats in the desert region similarly what are mesophytes so mesophytes are the plants growing in an environment which is neither very dry nor very wet so this category comes in between hydrophytes and xerophytes that is the mid category that is mesophytes but here you should know that xerophytes which are called as xerophilus plants are further classified on the basis of their habitat so these are also important among which there will be the other categories which I have previously discussed but there are certain addition also auxilophytes we have discussed on acidic soil halophytes on saline soil lithophytes growing on rocks samophytes growing on sand and gravels chersophytes so this is new name for some of you chersophytes or chersophytes grow on wasteland specifically and eromophytes are the plants which are growing on deserts and steppes so these are very specific thing eromophytes grow on desert as well as steppes kind of ecological habitat cycrophytes grow on cold soil so cycrophytes growing on cold kind of soil similarly silophytes are growing specifically in the savanna kind of forest which is silophytes plant and coming to the last one that is sclerophytes which are growing on forest and bushland so they are having sclerophyllous leaves specifically found on bushland and also in forest so these are the subdivision of the xerophyllous plants or xerophytes so here we have learned so many things so many terminology and there are many chances that questions can come from here so i would suggest you to note down all these things and stay tuned for the next video in this series and if you like this don't forget to like share it with your friends and subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed till now and if you have subscribed the channel then thank you very much keep smiling and believe in yourself